Everyone ready? Good. 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 Okay. Um, so I'm happy to introduce Bruno, um, who is doing a PhD at Strathclyde and is working with a bunch of us there, including me. Um, so Bruno's responsible for a lot of the kind of new category theory around um, parameterized, parameterized things, parameterized optics, the uh, our paper from ACT last year, for example, Bruno was like, arguably, maybe the driving force behind that, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, so this is Bruno talking about uh, operational aspects of optics. So I've seen this talk before, so uh, take it away. Thanks, Jules. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here and, and talk about something that's been um, stewing, that's been cooking in, in, in MSP in, uh, for a while. Uh, uh, which is an operational aspect of optics and lenses. As, and it's really something that I haven't seen discussed in, in literature or, 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 or other places. Um, so this is really, I want to share these things. All of these things are really questions. I want to hear what your thoughts are, especially in regards uh, to all the other stuff that's happening with poly and pro functor optics and all of this. So I'll just, I'll just go into this. Now I have this, uh, introduction slide, why optics lenses? And I suppose I don't need to introduce this too much, uh, but but uh, I'm gonna do one just visual thing. Uh, these are abstract gadgets for mod mod modeling bidirectional processes. So we all know that there's loads of applications um, and I've just have some examples here. There's, there's countless more from game theory, machine learning databases and uh, so what, what am I going to talk about when it comes to what does what does operational aspects mean? So the summary of this talk in one slide is, is that optics, so I'm, I'm going to define again all of these optics and lenses and see how they work, but this is more of a broad overview. So, so we all know that optics are defined for a general uh, monoidal category, while uh, lenses, Cartesian lenses, are defined well for a Cartesian monoidal category. So we we need some extra structure, namely we need to be able to naturally copy things and we, we need to be able to delete things. Now, it is, it is well understood that when C is Cartesian, the category of lenses is equivalent to categories of optics. So uh, this has been shown uh, numerous times. Now, what, what I'm gonna talk about today is that this equivalence is the result of erasure of, of important data, important operational data. Uh, so I'm gonna really talk about what operational here means, but um, we're gonna see that optics allow us to track this data while lenses don't. And uh, when we take this to the, to the uh, conclusion, we're gonna see actually that optics uh, in, in tracking this data, they compose differently than lenses. Now, now this might sound strange, but I'm gonna I'm gonna substantiate this argument. Uh, so, this is based on a few technical, uh, not details, but maybe maybe what are we going to talk about when it comes to category theory? We're gonna talk about how optics can naturally be represented at, as not a category but a two category. Uh, and now, since the optic optics are two category, we're gonna see that this functor, the embedding from lenses into optics is, is, is not just a functor anymore, it's an OPLAX functor. Uh, and we're gonna see that the usual isomorphism of sets between, uh, so lenses from A, A prime and B, B prime and optics from A, B, B prime is actually not an isomorphism. It can be upgraded to, to an adjunction. Uh, this is when, again, we think of optics as a two category. So I want to have a disclaimer. This is, this is still work in progress. Uh, and it's not really a major result. Uh, um, it's really a different perspective I want to share. Uh, it, it's, it's, I think it's really useful. And I've sort of been thinking with this knowledge in mind about all these applications to systems theory and, and game theory and machine learning. Uh, so, and really just a fun thing from our fiber optics uh, paper, uh, 
there's this tesseract that, that has a lot of stuff going on. And really what, what I'm going to unpack today is one edge of this tesseract in, in, in a lot of detail. Um, so the first part, the first part is going to be category of lenses. Um, um, does this sound good so far? Uh, maybe there's a question before I start. Amazing. Uh, well, I'll just I'll just go right into it. So uh, I'm going to talk about the category lens C. By the way, in all of the today's talk, uh, I'm going to be fixing a Cartesian category C, uh, even when I talk about optics later. So anytime you see C, there's only going to be Cartesian categories at hand. Uh, so. I think in this seminar, lenses have been defined countless times. So I will not spend too much time on this, but of course you're free to ask me questions. So objects in the category of lenses are pairs of objects in C. So these are uh, simple lenses or maybe bimorphic lenses. Uh, so it's a pair of objects in C and a morphism from AA prime to BB prime is a pair of maps in C where get is of type A to B and put is of type A times B prime to A prime. Now, visually, how I think about this is we, we, we have a forward pass and we have a backward pass. The forward pass uh, copies the input, saving it for the put map, um, and then uses the get to compute an output. And then the environment responds with, if you're doing gradient-based learning, it responds with a change. In game, in game theory, it responds with a utility. In databases, perhaps there's a new row that's being added. And then we use that to update the original thing, or whatever it was. So that is the general shape. And okay, so I've actually drawn this, animated this here. Uh, this, this, is, this is the data flow. This is the operational way this, a particle moves through it. I, I like to think of it this way. Now, how do lenses compose? Uh, to, to, to show you that this is a category, I need to tell you how they compose. So, so really, if I have a lens, um, from AA prime to BB prime, and the lens from BB prime to CC prime. Uh, so there's a get one, put one, get two, put two. I might ask you, well, how, how, how should I compose this, these gadgets? Um, so is it maybe this? this? This seems pretty sensible, right? I, I just plugged these two together. And, and this is really natural in category theory, everything some, you know, sometimes, once we define things properly, everything is natural and we just plug them together and, and we get, a, we get, uh, we don't have to think too much. So is this the way to compose them? The answer is actually no. If you thought this was the way to compose lenses, no, this is not. Oh, uh, so what do I mean? Uh, let, let's, let's, see, let's see how we would need to define this. So if we have, we have two lenses here. The first one is A prime, BB prime, and second one is BB prime, CC prime get one, put one, get two, put two. So we need to write a composite lens from A, uh, a to C, right? So this means we have a get from A to C, uh, but that's easy to write. We just write, this would be the get one. Uh, this would be get two. So far, so good. This would be the composite get, but now we need to write the composite put map. Uh, so what is the corresponding type? Uh, um, and of course, in this, in this lecture series, we have loads of times defined composition, but I invite you to bear with me because there is a point why am I going in this in excruciating detail. So uh, we need to write a map of A times C prime to uh, A prime, right? This is our map. And, and the, way, the way I approach this, so, so using all of these four things, we need to define a map of this type. So really we see that the only way to get an A prime is to use put one. So I'm going to write put one here, put one, and we get A times B prime. Now, the only way to get a B prime, the only way to get a B prime here is to use put two and keep A on the side. So what I'm going to do is write A times put two. So we get um, A times B times C prime. Um, Right, so now we see, okay, we already, we need a C prime, but we have it. So we need to get from an A and A times B. Okay, so what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna, we're gonna copy A 
and keep C prime fixed. So we get A times A times C prime. And uh, we see that, okay, now we just need to turn the middle A into a B and we use the get one here. So this is gonna be A times get one times C prime. Uh, so written in a relatively bad handwriting, this is, this is how lens composition looks like symbolically. Uh, so let's, let's take a step back maybe. Um, how does, how does this lens look like in, in the diagram I've drawn before? If you, if you remember here, I've drawn lens as a, there's an input that's copied. So if you, if you take this lens here and draw it in a similar way, we get something that looks like this. So the composite get map is here, composite of get one, get two. And here we see the composite put map. Uh, you can convince yourself if you stare at this and this, so this is exactly what, what, what's going on. Now, there is something we might notice. There's some peculiarities here. We see that the get map, get one is computed twice. We see it's computed here in, get, in, in the put map, but it's also computed in the, in the forward map. So this looks like an unnecessary redundancy. Um, and to really convince ourselves that, um, that something funky is going on, I'm gonna show how a composition of three lenses looks like. So I'll spare you the trouble of <laughs> defining the composition by hand, and I'm gonna just show you how the end result looks like. So what happens when you compose three lenses? And then you can really see, you can really see something fishy is going on. So we see, you see here, we have the composite of three get maps, and then this is the com big composite put map. And now we notice uh, things happening. We note that not only we have the get one map computed, but it's it's duplicated twice, and also get get two is duplicated. So in principle, if you have n lenses computed, if you if, sorry, if you have n lenses composed in sequence, what happens is that we get n times n minus one over two redundant copies of get maps. Um, so why 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 does this matter? Why why is this a problem? Well, there's really two two ways that I see this. This is if, if we implement this in the, in the way I've shown here, this yields inefficient implementation. So if I have a big neural network with 20 layers, it's already really costly to train it, but let alone if I, if I duplicate the com computation. And, and the, sec the second thing is, is really conceptually, at least when I think about this, Reasoning about the composition of put maps, it's really hard like checking whether, whether it's associative and checking whether a whole thing works. It, there's really conceptual hurdles there. So I'd personally like to have a simpler way to think about this. Um, so so why, does this, why does this happen? Uh, well, if we look at, so here's the idea, right? We have a forward pass and we have a backward pass. And all of the uh, data, sort of the, the thing that's mediating the passage between the forward and the backward pass is this small wire labeled with A here. So this is the bottleneck through which everything that we need for the backward pass in case, in this case, a B and an A needs to squeeze through. So um, uh, by the way, I, this bottleneck, this is something I'm going to be calling the internal state of a lens. So this is, this is how I think about it. We have a forward pass, you compute some internal state, uh, and then we use it for the backward pass. And everything we really do as we compose three lenses or five really needs to squeeze through this bottleneck, which is always equal to the top left input. So no matter if you have seven lenses composed in a row, it's always going to be the case that the type of this internal state of a lens um, of this type is going to be equal to the top left input, namely A. Um, so you're seeing what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm re reifying this concept of an internal state and, and making it explicit. So this is, this is the problem, right? Um, I would not want to implement this in the way I proposed, like this is not the way we want to implement. So, so why does this happen? How, how do we solve this? And, and really I'm gonna answer this by unpacking what the, what the category 
uh, of optics is. Um, but before I do that, I'll stop for, for any questions. All right, so I hope it's clear. Basically, the idea is we have a we have a problem of this bottleneck. And oh, so uh, oh, can I ask a question? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to ask a question earlier. I had the wrong mic on. Uh, yeah, so are you in a Cartesian category? I, I, I missed. I missed. Uh, yes, I am. So 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 why? So what sort of seems to be um, uh, shouting out to me, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, is why can't you just move that? junction through the put uh, through the get so get rid of those two gets and do this splitting after the get one um you mean something like this where it goes here yeah right so that's a good question and i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna unpack that uh, okay. so 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 the reason is if if you've done if you've done that then the map put would need to have basically an input B. So we would have, it would have an A here and a B here. And then the map put would be of type A times B times C prime to A prime. But that's not what the type is. The put only has, to define the map put, we only have access to the outside ports. We don't have, so it always has to be A times C prime to A prime. And we have no way of, of, of it's not explicit. This B can't be explicit data uh, for us to create in a lens. So, so somehow, I mean, is it that the problem is you're splitting into a put and a get rather than having a, a single yeah, so, notion of yeah. So uh, absolutely, w what you're proposing is going to be the category of optics. Um, so uh, maybe, maybe let's go through that, and and hopefully things are going to be. So, what is the category of optics? It's it's very similar. We have pairs of objects in C, so it's AA prime, but now a morphism from AA prime to BB prime, it's not anymore a pair, it's a triple. So we have a triple M, uh, F and B. So, so M is an object of C, which we're gonna think of as the internal state uh, of this optic. And we have a forward pass and a backward pass. So, so how does this look really? Uh, I think I might even show it after might show this image after but this is the map f this is the map b um, so now optics allow us to to specify this extra data of of m of the type of the residual of the type of the internal state uh, by the way i might be using the word residual also interchangeably with the with uh the term internal state so, so this is a prime bb prime this is precisely what optics allow us, they allow us to choose. So this is, you, we can see that this is F and B are dependent. So they have a type that depends on what M we choose. Uh, so we have a forward part, A, uh, A to M times B, which computes something, saves an internal state of type M. This is, this is, and then we have a backwards part that uses this, uh, uh, this M together with a B prime uh, to produce an A prime. Now, uh, this morphism isn't really um, this is really quotiented out by a specific uh, by specific rule. So we sort of we actually say that two optics are equivalent. So if you have an optic M, F, and B, and M prime, F prime, sorry, M bar, F bar, and B bar, if there is a map between the corresponding internal states or, or residual such that some equations hold. Now, I'm going to go back to these equations later. Um, for now, it's 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 just good to know that there there is some caveat there uh, that there is some quotienting going on. That for now, for us, is not it's not uh, too important. But the idea is that optics allow give us this data point. Sorry, this, give us extra data that we can use when modeling these processes. So we can say what is the type of internal state um, at each optic. And this is explicit data now. So in lenses, we didn't have the option of choosing this, but now this is explicit data that can be manipulated. So uh, to actually show you that optics is a category, I need to tell you how it's, how it's, how composition works. Uh, 
Um, I see a comment from Jules about the quotient. Uh, we're going to come back. Uh, we can maybe come back to that. I'm going to go through the exact same uh, quotient towards the end. Um, so be, before I tell you how the, these things are composed, I really just want to show you that every lens, which, which has a get and a put map, which doesn't have a notion of a residual or an internal state, we can reify this concept and get, an, get a residual. So if we have a lens which has a get and a put, we really can make this residual explicit by, and, and get an optic. So we can get, how do we do that? Well, we need to provide a triple, right? So, so to get an optic of this type, we need to provide a triple. Our internal state is going to be A, which is the top left input. Now, the forward map of the optic, what is it going to do? It's going to copy the input and then use apply get on just one of the, one of the, one of the A's. And put is going to be the same. So really, if maybe what might help is really seeing this as the picture I've shown before. So starting from two maps, get and put, really the picture I've been showing you so far is, is, is thinking of a lens as an optic, where I have this forward pass. And now we see the copy is done here. I don't touch one of the inputs. This is this one. And the other input gets applied, has get applied to it. So we see that from every lens, we can get an optic by choosing the residual as the top left input, choosing the forward map as this composite and the backward map as this. Um, but even more vice versa, if we have an optic, so if we have something like this, we can turn it into a lens. Uh, so we really are talking about going from lenses to optics and from optics, uh, back to lenses. So if I have an optic here, an arbitrary optic with a residual M, a forward map F and a backward map B, I can turn it into a lens. Uh, remember I am in a Cartesian setting, uh, even though I'm talking about optics here. Um, so I'm assuming that's the, that's the setting I'm in. Uh, and really I need to provide get and put maps. So what's gonna happen is I need to get a get map, which is going to be basically F, and I'm going to project out one of the components. Um, now, to provide a put map, well, what do I need to do? Um, so I, I'm going to project the other component of the get map and use it as an input to the backward map. Uh, so this, this formula here really defines a put map. Uh, so maybe, maybe maybe it might be helpful to unpack if I have the map B, which goes from M times B prime into A prime, this is the map B. Uh, so to turn it into a lens, right? We need to have it of, to be of the type A times B prime to A prime, right? So we need to have A times B prime and then to A, A prime. And what we use here really is uh, we use um, we uh, take F and project out the first component. So that's going to be a map from uh, A to M. And, uh, and we just keep B prime on the side. So really what I, what I want to show is, this can be shown visually. Um, so uh, this is an animation that's gonna loop and I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for it to loop back and, and, and show what this means here. So by the way, here we see that it's been relabeled X, X prime and Y, Y prime, but I hope that's not an obstacle. Right, so we see we have, we start, so the idea is how can we turn an optic into a lens? Um, so I'm following a proof from, I saw it first in Mitchell Riley's uh, paper categories of optics, uh, where he uses unit of reduction. And that's what I'm gonna do and animate it on the side. So we start with, start with an optic. Um, 
And we really use the universal property of the product here, where if we have a map from X to M times Y, that's really having a map from X to M and a map from X to Y. So we see that the universal property of the product, really there's an implicit copy happening before. And now what's gonna happen is we want to slide. So this is, we want to slide the, the, we want to slide this part back down to the put map. This is what happens here. We slide part of the projection of the first component down into the put map and uh, we get a lens. And this thing, this thing forms an isomorphism. So uh, the home sets uh, of lenses and optics in a Cartesian setting is, uh, the home sets are isomorphic. Okay, so getting back to, to, to this question of how the optics compose, uh, it's actually really simple. If I have an optic like this and another one, I, I, do the, I do the obvious thing of actually plugging them together. So this is our original guess. I, so if I have two optics, I plug them together. I, uh, we can think about having a big box around and I tensor the residual side by side. So uh, here it's a tensor, but really I'm working right now in a Cartesian setting. So the composite optic is gonna have a residual, which is a pair of residuals and the forward and backward maps are gonna be composed as, as in this animation. So really this, is, this was our original guess. Uh, what, what, what seemed to us as a composition of lenses uh, was actually a composition of, of, of lenses as optics. So we see that the forward pass happens, I copy, I save a state here, but it's not the only thing I save because I can choose my residual to be, you know, I, I am not, I'm not, my hands are not tied that the residual has to be always equal to the top left input. I can choose whatever I want. And in this case, we can choose the residual to be A times B, which means that I save an input of type A, save a, save a state of type A, and then use the get map and save a state of type B. And then I collect them backwards as I go. So it's like pushing to a stack and popping off a stack. That's, 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 that's one, one way of thinking of it. Uh, So um, I wrote this in a more symbolic form. Uh, so the residual is a pair of residuals, the composition of forward maps. It's, it's really unpacking the details of the, the string diagrams. Uh, it just looks a bit more complicated like this. So, so, start, so here, here's now something interesting. Uh, we talked about how we can compose two lenses. Um, and, and really, if I start with two lenses, there are two different ways Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so the question, uh, sorry, I'm answering yes to the question from the chat is that uh, as, yeah, the residual does get larger, the more composites I do. So really we, we see a trade-off. It's, it's a, it's a trade-off sort of between space and time. We have a, we don't have to reuse things. Uh, we don't have to reuse computation, but we need a bit more space while with lenses, we, we have used less space, but we need to recompute more things. So again, it depends what we want to do. Uh, and really, uh, if we start from two lenses, um, there are two ways to obtain a, comp so there's two, way, two things we can do. We can, so let's say we start with a lens from A to B and a lens from B to C. We can either compose them as lenses and then turn this composition into optics. So we embed this lens in, into an optic, or we can first turn these lenses into optics and then compose them. So let's, let's, let's think about, um, so let's think about what, what happens here. Uh, so I've, I've drawn our characters uh, again. So one way is turning into optics and composing them which is our original guess. And then the second guess is, and that, then the second possible way of composing these two lenses is first composing them as lenses and then turning this into an optic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see here, uh, so composition is kind of fun. Uh, well, we're gonna see actually. So uh, 
I'm, I'm going to talk about what what this what this structure actually is. Uh, this is we're, we're, we're going to see that later. Uh, um, it's going to be an oplax functor. That's that's the idea. But but let, let let me not get ahead of myself. I see many things in the chat, so I might just might just continue going and not get distracted uh, for a while. Uh, so right. If it first turned them into op if so starting from two lenses, right? We can first turn them into optics and then compose them. And the result is going to be something that has a residual, which is pair of residuals, and then a forward map and a backward map, which I didn't write here. But if you first compose them as lenses and then turn that lens into an optic, we're going to get a residual that's just one thing here. And it's also going to have a forward and a backward part. So here we have a bottleneck. Here we we don't, but we need more space. Um, and the question really is, are these optics equivalent? So do we want to say that these are the same optics? Uh, and the answer for that, really, when we talk about asserting equality, we need to take a vantage point. And if our vantage point is the notational, then the answer is yes. Both this and this are going to compute for the same inputs, the same outputs. The, the, there is not going to be a difference. But if you think about this operationally, uh, the answer is no. Uh, depending on what computer we run this on, maybe this is going to be faster uh, or probably slower than doing the other thing. So what I'm now going to talk about is how we can talk about this operational aspects using category theory. I've sort of been very hand wavy and, and it's, um, um, yeah, so I'm really uh, curious to hear. Uh, I haven't really seen, like we talk about poly and I don't know, profunctor optics, but it, it's never really a two categorical perspective. It's always, they're always just categories with morphisms, or at least I don't know, uh, perhaps. Uh, if, uh, if there's some two categorical aspect, but what I'm going to talk about now is, is the two category, two category of optics. Um, so I see some questions. I suppose I'm I'm good with time. So I might I might. So the, but the get function should be referentially transparent. So can't we memorize them? Um, so what do you, what do you mean exactly here? Um, so a get function, you know, being a morphism in some category. Right, like Bartosz says, you know, notionally it maps inputs to outputs. It should always map the same input to the same output, you know, up to certain assumptions. Therefore, we should just be able to save a dictionary of input output mappings, just write down the input output table, which is then making the same time for space trade off that we make in the optic form. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, we can do that. Um, oh, okay. So, so the way I see, the way I think about this, it's, it's. I, I'd like to have a representation. I'd like to have. People sometimes talk about, uh, you know, oh, we have a nice abstraction, but then when we implement it, you know, it's fast, it's slow. And I'd like to have efficiency happen, not at the expense of compositionality, but rather because of it. So I'd rather, I'd like to have an abstraction that I don't need to do uh, extra tricks. To make it work and i'd like to maybe talk about these concepts oh well if i actually save this state did i end up using an optic um this maybe maybe i'm misunderstanding but it seems like what you're talking about is something outside of the framework um, uh, outside of the categorical framework um that's all right it's a purely and operational it aspect yeah, and I mean, it's really important to think about how these things work, as Jules says, when we compile them down. We need to use a programming language and it has a compiler and there might be some optimizations. So really what would be, what eventually we would like to do is to have the compiler be aware of, of some of these things. Uh, and I, I have no clue how GHC does this. So how, how do we describe these things uh, using category theory? So. I'm going to now talk about the two category of optics. 
So uh, what is optic as a two category? So we're going to have the same objects as we did, and we're going to have, and I'm going to say the same morphisms, but without the quotient. So if you remember, we said, and I'm going to now talk about this quotient, but we said, oh, the, the uh, amorphism is a triple M, F, and B, but there is some quotient happening. So I'm really going to say, no, no, no. This morphism is going to be a triple, and we're going to do the quotient at the higher level. So really, what we're going to say is that there is a two cell between optics M, F, B, and M bar, F bar, and B bar. Uh, and it's going to be this exact same quotient from before. So, so let, let, let me unpack what this means. Um, we say that a two cell between two different optics um, is a map between their internal states, between the residuals, such that particular diagrams commute. So this is what we talked about before. Now there is, what, what does this really mean? And there is some issue of directionality. I'm, I'm gonna talk about that as well. So if I have an optic, uh, so this is my first optic, uh, MFB. So it goes from A to M times B and M times B prime to A prime. This is, it consists of a forward map and a backward map. Now, if I have another optic, which is F bar, it, so it takes from A to M bar times B, and it takes an M bar times B prime to A prime. We are going to say that there is a two cell, there is a, there is a morphism between these optics. If there's a map between their internal states, such that what happens? So let's think about what this really means. There's going to be a map, be a map going this way. If, if I look at this, uh, the first optic and the backward map is actually a composite. Uh, and it's a composite that contains this reparameterization. Namely, given this M and a B prime, really I reparameterize it to M bar and then I apply the other map. Then I apply the B bar. And the two cell is going to exist if I, and the conceptual idea is this, I can take this reparameterization and place it here. So I'm gonna explain what that means such that I can first do the forward map then apply the R and get an M bar. So let me let me show this with a picture. I think it's I think it's much clearer. So again, this is my first optic. So we see the M here, we see the forward map here, and we see the backward map here. Now, so sort of the backward map is elongated and, and, and it contains other stuff. And the second optic is is M bar, so it's here. Now the forward map is elongated. And the backward map is here. And I've drawn this uh, in this particular way, where now a two cell really means that from my first optic, I can it, it contains a reparameterization in the backward pass that I can put now in the forward pass. So I think of it as, as taking a bit of computation and, and pushing it up. So a two cell really moves the boundary down. So my boundary was M and it moves it to M prime but it moves the reparameterization up to the forward pass. So what is, what is the idea? It's like, you can think of it as, as taking a part of computation and moving it to the forward pass. Like for instance, in, in machine learning in automatic differentiation, uh, you might have the way you compute the derivative might share some computation with the way you compute the forward values. So actually, shouldn't want to you don't want to wait for the backward pass if you if you're implementing this on a GPU, and if it's all at the same block, you can optimize this. So if you can do them both at the same time and you reuse reuse computation efficiently. So really, I think about it as so we can move this sorry we can move this reparameterization to the forward pass, and I I think of it as can be optimized too. This is a slightly hand wavy. Uh, uh, hungry way of thinking about it. Um, but it's precisely what, for, for instance, uh, Connell Elliott noticed in the simple essence of automatic differentiation. So he starts with a lens form, and then he notices that uh, it duplicates data, and then he chooses a different residual and performs a reparameterization. 
to get a more efficient implementation. He, he interestingly enough, doesn't use any of the terminology of lenses, but that's what he's doing. Uh, I found it quite quite illuminating to think about think about it like this. Uh, so, one, one, one tricky thing, maybe one important detail to mention is that that before we would say so we have directionality. This is a two cell, and really. Uh, before the definition of, if, if I go back to the to the beginning, um, uh, yes, this is the. Uh, we would say that these optics are equivalent uh, if there is a map going one of the ways. So this would be equivalent to this. We would sort of have maps going both ways. Uh, uh, if there is a map going one of the ways. So these would be equivalent optics indistinguishable. Now for us, uh, I hope I'm making the right. Uh, but now we really have directionality. So we really are saying there is a morphism going one way. So there is a, there's a morphism going one way that moves the boundary down, reparameterization up. And we're not saying these are equivalent anymore. We leave the notion of saying whether they're equivalent to the standard categorical way of saying, oh, well, there needs to be an isomorphism of these things, isomorphism of reparameterizations. Okay, so what, what does all this mean? I've, I've sort of said a lot of stuff, so maybe let me let me let me contract this and, and, and get back to 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 sort of the consequences that this tells us. So note now optic, I am now thinking of it as a two category, but I'm thinking of lenses as a one category. And it's going to end up being that the embedding of lenses into optics is now not a functor, but it's an oplex functor. So if you remember this diagram from before where I told you, well, if I have two lenses to, to get a composite optics, I can either compose them as lenses and then turn the result into an optic or turn them into optics and then compose, compose them as optics. Now, turns out these things are not going to give me the same result. Uh, as we've shown, uh, and there's going to be this square is going to be precisely the oplax square. So the how do we call it? The oplaxator of of this oplax functor. So in a normal functor, these would be the this would this would be a commutative square. But here for us for us it's not. We're going to have a two cell, namely since this is now since optics are two category, we're going to have a two cell. Um, so to answer the question about the Cohen's, uh, this my my understanding is, and I, I, maybe I can be this can be made more precise by somebody that all of this ends up happening if we don't take the Cohen in the original optic construction, but think about it as a, as a lax Cohen. Uh, there's lots of details to wrangle. But we sort of want to not quotient things out, but have have explicit have two cells that um, allow us to talk about the way we are, like give us fine grained detail. Right. So I think one of the last things that now I'm going to unpack is really something I, I found so I find I find super cool. Uh, so the usual isomorphism of set, if you, uh, if you remember, by the way, I've talked about previously, we've had optics as a one category, and then the home set would be just a set, lenses would be a one category, this would be a set, and we would have an isomorphism of set. But now, since we upgraded optics to a category, we get something interesting. So we're going to get not an isomorphism, but an adjunction. So note that I'm, so we have a category here, but since lenses are still just a one category, that means that it's home set, uh, home sets are just still sets, but sets are discrete categories. So what, it, what this is, is an adjunction. Uh, so the slogan is uh, residual reification is left adjoint to residual erasure. So, 
should I unpack this? Uh, when should I aim to finish, by the way? Oh, five minutes from now or so. Oh, five minutes. Okay, I think I think I have time. Um, so really, the the previous isomorphism is an adjunction. So so it takes a while to prove all the details, but I'll, I'll give I'll give a sense of what I mean here. Uh, so the way I think about it is, I, if I start with an optic, and I'm going to write M, F, and B. Yeah, this is. This is sort of a free forgetful adjunction. That's, that's how I think about it, yeah. I suppose every adjunction is sort of, uh, uh, sort of like that. So, so what the idea is, I'm gonna do the, do the path where I start with an optic, uh, get a lens off it, and then, so I'm gonna start with an optic, forget the residual and get a lens, and then reify that residual and get an optic. And it's gonna turn out that I don't get the same optic that I started with. So, Let's say if I start with an optic, uh, I need to turn it into a lens. So I need to provide get uh, a get and a put map. So let's think about this. The get map should be as before. It should be F, and then I project out the second component. But the put map, again, also if you remember, um, I need to project out the first component, then keep B prime on the side, uh, and then compose that result, there is a big bracket here with B. So I've, I've unpacked this before. Uh, and this is, so this is the get and this is the put. Now what I've done really here is taken this optic and turned it into a lens whose, um, and now I might ask, well, what, what is the residual of this lens? Oh, well, okay, to do that, I turn it back into, into an optic in all the previous ways I've said. So how do I, how do I let me just draw this a bit differently. How do I turn this uh, lens into an optic? Well, the residual is always going to be the top left input, which is A. Uh, by the way, all of these optics and lenses are of AA prime to BB prime. Right? That, that, is, that is the type. Um, and I need to provide now the forward map and the backward map. Well, let's think about this. So to get the forward map, I need to first copy the input and then uh, I need to leave it be on one of the side, one of the ports, but on the other one, I'm going to use my get map, which is now a composite f composite pi two. Um, and now I need to write the backwards map. But if you remember the embedding from lenses to optics, the backward map is unchanged, so I can literally just copy this, maybe shrink it a little so it fits. Uh, so there's there's lots of stuff going on, and uh, this might be hard to sort of wrangle what, 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 what's going on. But the idea is that I started with an optic, turned into the lens, got back an optic, and these are not the same thing. Uh, there's going to be a two cell going, sorry, there's going to be a reparameterization. Um, so namely a morphism of these optics going this way. So from a lens, I can sort of optimize it into an optic. Now, what reparameterization is it? Um, it is the animation from above. Uh, which I've showed here, uh, but I will, I will, uh, well, maybe I can wait for a bit and just show, show, show what it is. So um, I thought I saw the adjunction going the wrong way, but may, is it possible that the that the um, bottom map was the left adjoint? Uh, let me see. So this should be the, so this is a free thing that, yeah, this, oh, right. You're absolutely right. Yes, uh, this is a mistake. So it should be this, um, yeah. So I have an optic and I forget the residual. So this is right adjoint. And then I generate it, this, uh, that's the left adjoint. Thanks. Thanks. Um, and yeah, this is the, I actually am not sure if this is the unit or co-unit, I always get this mixed up, but it's, it's, it's one of them. Uh, and and that's, that's, this, is, this is really where, where I'm gonna stop. Uh, uh, so this is, uh, this is an operational view on all of these things. So I don't know, I, I come 
I always try to think of these things very uh, operationally, what happens at each step. And I haven't really seen this way of uh, being talked about when it comes to lenses in, in general. And I find, I find it quite useful. So really, I'm just, I'm just sharing this. I, I, hope, I hope it's useful. I hope, I'm really curious to hear uh, maybe feedback or how, how it looks to you. Uh, now, I've, the, the more I think about this, the more I find that this idea of internal state and residuals and, is really useful. And I sort of have less and less reason to want to use lenses because I need to duplicate data. And anytime I implement it, I, I'd have to do tricks not to have poor implementation. Um, so yeah, really lenses, I think of lenses as optics with a global choice of residual. And this choice uh, changes the composition rule because I can't, as I compose optics, I, as I compose lenses, I can't tensor the residuals. I always have to have the, uh, have it equal to the top left input. So I have to change the composition rule and all it's complex. But in optics, I, we can choose this residual and we keep the composition simple, of course, at the trade-off of space. Um, and we can track these operational aspects at the two level. So really what, what, what my future work is, is what I'd like to think about is everything here I've described works for any other type of optics. So let's say I started with a co-Cartesian category. I would have optics for that, which are gonna be prisms. Everything still applies. Uh, let's say I start with, started with affine traversals. Uh, things would still apply. Um, and maybe my, the question I really want to know the answer to is what if we start with dependent lenses? And this is, this is something that I can't wrap my mind around. Can we optimize them? in this way. So we, we have a preprint out uh, on, on fiber optics, which, which talks about this. Um, it talks about a lot of things. I'm personally interested in really understanding uh, how, how the dependence interacts with this. So if you have any ideas, I'd love to, I'd love to chat about this. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's all for me. There's references. Uh, there's a blog post of this paper as well. Uh, I was supposed to put a link here. It's not here, but I'm going to put it in the chat. So uh, yeah, this is where I'm going to end. Great. Thanks, Bruno. That's all. Applaud Bruno for his great talk. I guess we've got at least seven minutes for questions, but often the discussion goes on a bit longer. Um, I would like to ask you a question, Bruno, if you don't mind. I would like to ask you, um, how does the two, the kind of two-cell structure, the bicategorical structure of optics relate to uh, the two-cell structure of the para construction we've heard about on other occasions? Yeah, so it's it's quite related really we can I, the, the slogan is optics is para co para and para in a trench coat so if we if we think about para as as sorry if we think about co para as 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 being something of this shape where i can reparametrize morphisms um, like this and if i think of para as 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 being boxes of this shape um, where I can also reparameter as morphisms, but now in the other way, then really putting them together gets us optics. So if I reparameter from reparameterizing para backwards is co para forwards. Uh, uh, so so that, that, that's how I see it. Do you know a way to say that formally, this trench? A few ways. I don't think I actually know of a satisfying way to like. I, it looks like it should be like uh, some sort of. Uh, oh well, no, actually I do. Uh, it, it, this is a pullback, uh, which is unpacked in our fiber optics paper. Great, thanks. Uh, may I make a comment? Um, of course, yes. So yeah, Bruno presented very nice diagrams, and uh, these diagrams, at least for me, remind the story when people relate delta lenses to co-discrete lenses. And 
uh, in the say what you show the nice composition of optics very much reminds composition of millimorphisms. There is nice paper by Bob Paré about millimorphisms. And in general, again, as a speculation, but my feelings that um, when you consider the problems which you consider it in a co-discrete setting, you use a sort of poor language uh, because there is no magic delta za zia. But when you do it co-discretely, you uh, simulate deltas by concepts of co-discrete lenses that is just objects and arrows. Uh, uh, and because you don't have enough basic concepts, you don't have deltas in the categories, that is spaces A and B. There are no arrows there and there are no arrows in between. Then uh, the same entity plays different roles. And so the language is getting uh, very complicated. That is, I would suspect that some of the problems uh, would just disappear when you consider this in the delta lens setting. Just you will have more basic entities and you can uh, easily and directly model what you want. While in code discrete setting, you use the same thing for modeling different things. It needs to be checked, of course, but, uh, uh, but my feeling, because your pictures are very nice and these pictures very much remind me this story. Uh, when you take Delta lens, then you forget some stuff, get to this code discrete lens, and a lot of problems appear. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. It needs to be checked, of course, but because it's all sounds like very general, but yeah. It, it, it would not be too difficult to do. I have seen uh, Bryce Clark is here. Bryce, can you say anything? No, there are no other Delta Lens people. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I think there is this aspect of, at least in MSP, we we, we are, uh, uh, <laughs> what, what's the phrase? We are not really, uh, we're significantly malnourished when it comes to thinking about Delta Lenses. We really think about optics and there's all these other, aspect, other ways of thinking about lenses that, at least I'm not too um, uh, too intuitive with. So I know, yeah, I know uh, there's lots lots of interesting stuff that I'd like to understand how it fits. So so I, I don't know what can I think about delta lenses in this in these terms or uh, it, it's something it's something I it's something that what you're saying sounds possible, uh, but I have I am not. Uh, yeah, I, no, I, I but, don't know. But, but your lenses, co-discrete lenses, is just special case of delta lenses when uh, the categories in between the target and source categories are just co-discrete. Um, another notion that may be helpful even in co-discrete setting, lenses with constant complement. There was a lot of work in early uh, days of when lenses were introduced, uh, Benjamin Pierce, Nate Foster, uh, they consider it, I believe, lenses with constant complement. It's residual. That is what in optics you call residual, it's pretty much analogous to constant complement. I think maybe we should, thanks, Anobi. I think maybe we should save the larger discussion for all yes yes yeah i am yeah, yeah. One yeah. More question. sorry yeah like, i don't i don't problem. want to yeah to turn it into delta lens discussion yeah we've you can a, see it's not needed yeah we have a hand we have a we have a raised hand yeah. um from gordon uh okay i'll speak then so thanks for that's a very interesting talk so implicit in what you said but i might make it explicit is when you do reverse differentiation efficiently and you're computing the primals, you remember all the subterms. So it feels to me as if your optics is exactly the categorical structure for time efficient reverse differentiation. 
Yeah, so the way I understand it is what, what happens with efficient way of doing uh, reverse more AD is really what, what would be in the optics terms called uh, linear lenses. So I think it's like we save a continuation, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, um, which, which as, as we compose lenses and it accumulates all the progress we've made. Uh, and that's a special case of optics indeed. So in my mind, it's, it's a bit, it's, a, it's not, it's, mm. it's a bit fuzzy because there is at least two ways of doing it. So one, one, so let me just show a big picture of composition. So one way is this, right? Where I sort of do a lens, but, but I, I save the internal state. And the other one is really using linear lenses, which is, which is an orthogonal way of thinking about it. So it's a, it's a, a lens, a linear lens from A, A prime to B, B prime is an optic whose residual is going to be something of type uh, B to A, uh, sorry, B prime to A prime. So, so my forward map is gonna be A two, and I'm gonna produce a, a B, and I'm gonna produce a way to turn a gradient at B prime into a gradient at A prime. And then my backward map is just going to be evaluation. Uh, it's just going to be equal to, well, the type is going to be B prime A prime times B prime into A prime. And that's really just eval. Um, so I suppose my, yeah, I, I, my answer is yes, but it's not entirely clear to me if, if it seems like there's more to say. Uh, yeah. No, I was meaning something much simpler without uh, continuations or anything. Just think about the usual way of doing reverse differentiation in a graph. First of all, you mm -hmm. fill all the nodes in going up, and that's exactly creating ah, the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need anything higher order. You just go up, keep the, the subterms, and then come back. And it feels to me like that's exactly what your optics are doing. Ah, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And as, you said yourself, as you said yourself, that's done exactly for time efficiency versus space efficiency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how I see it. Okay. So we're doing categorical structures for efficient computation now. I think that's, that's an interesting move. Oh yeah, I'd love to have a paper that sort of does the time versus space efficiency of, of this abstract nonsense. This, it seems like that would be cool to, to actually say something uh, yeah, it seems I don't like think it's hard to say. Yeah, I don't think it's abstract. It's perfectly direct. Anyway, okay, thanks. So I propose we officially end the call and unofficially keep going. Well, so maybe just before you stop the recording, I just wanted to say that I was definitely, definitely not the first person to notice this UNADA reduction trick that takes you from optics to lenses. Um, hmm. Already, if you go and look at the original blog post by uh, Van Lahoven on his version of lenses, there's actually someone in the comments who notices exactly this connection. So uh, definitely wasn't me, just say that. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I said, yeah, I think it's the first time where I saw it, but yeah, uh, thanks. And Rachel, do you have a name of who you would cite if you were? Um, I'm actually not sure. Uh, Bartos, do you have any idea? Uh, the Van Larhoven post. Do you think that post is the best first place? Uh, I mean, Van Larhoven lenses are, uh, I mean, they are, they are less general, right? In, right. Yeah. Uh, they use a the functor representation. But at the very least, in, that, in the comments of that blog post, there is somebody making basically that argument. So that's probably a good place. So that person is the the person oh sorry uh yes it's uh it's ryan ingram ryan ingram okay thanks for that i think we should officially close um thanks again bruno <laughs>